Good morning, dear friends. Again, we come to you to bring the everlasting and glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reason we are here, the reason we proclaim to you the gospel and would call you to repent of your sins and believe in the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, is because He's the only Savior of sinners. Dear friends, there's only one God, the triune God of the Bible, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the only mediator who can bring us to God. Sins, our sins, have separated us from God, but the Lord Jesus Christ came in order to bring reconciliation between God and man, in order to save us from our sin and misery. And so, dear friends, the message that we bring to you today is the greatest and the best news you can ever hear. There is nothing more glorious, there is nothing more majestic and comforting than to hear the gospel, the good news of the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Redeemer of God's elect, who came into the world to save sinners. And dear friends, you and I were created by God. God made us, and therefore He is the one that we must worship, that we must obey. Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. This is the reason for which we were created, that we may know the Maker, our Maker, that we may know Him, commune with Him, enjoy Him, and live for His glory. But our sins have separated us from God, and therefore the only way we can do that for which we were created, namely to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever, is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only when a sinner repents and turns to Jesus Christ that that sinner is reconciled to God. That's the only way, dear friends, for sinners like you and me to be saved, is through faith in Jesus Christ. Well, dear friends, in Psalm 100, the Bible tells us, Psalm 100, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. So here, dear friends, in Psalm 100, we find this call, this summons to worship the living and the true God, the God of heaven and earth, the one who created the heavens and the earth by the word of His power of nothing in the space of six days and all very good. That God is the only God, and He calls us to worship Him. Psalm 100 is about worshiping God. It is about praising God. And the first thing we see here in Psalm 100 is a call to worship. A call to worship. Once again, listen to verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Here we find, dear friends, a call to worship. Jehovah God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God in three persons, calls us to come into His presence, to sing praises to His name, and to worship Him. But notice, friends, that this call to worship is 
universal. This call to worship is issued and directed at all the peoples, all the nations, all the ethnicities. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. All the nations are called to come and worship the God of the Bible. Why is that, dear friends? The reason God calls not just His people, the church, but all the lands to repent and come to Him and to be part of His church is because He's the only God. There is none other. There is no other God but the Lord. Deuteronomy 6 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There is only one God, the glorious, majestic, triune God of the Bible. And therefore, He alone is worthy of worship. He alone must be worshipped. To worship anything else or anyone else is idolatry. Only God is to be worshipped, the God of the Bible. We are to serve Him with gladness. We are to come before His presence with singing. So here we see that God is calling us to praise Him and worship Him through Christ the Redeemer, the only mediator between God and men. This is because we are in a state of enmity with God. As fallen sons and daughters of Adam, we were conceived in corruption and born in sin. We have sinned against God and therefore we are separated from Him. Our sins have separated us from God. We cannot know Him savingly or worship Him according to His Word in our own strength because all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. We cannot come to God on our own. Our God is a consuming fire. He is holy and righteous and good. And we cannot come into His presence without being consumed by His holiness. This is why we need a mediator. We need someone to bring us to God. It's only through Jesus Christ that we can obey Psalm 100. It's only through Jesus Christ that we can experience the comfortable presence of God, that we could be reconciled to Him and brought into communion with the God of the heavens. There is a call to worship, to worship the living and the true God. But then secondly, we see the object of worship. The object of worship, who it is that we must worship. Listen to verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. The only proper object of worship is the Lord. Only the Lord must be worshipped. Have you heard of the Ten Commandments? In Exodus chapter 20, the Lord speaks and says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them, that love me and keep my commandments. And so, dear friends, 
we must not have any other gods or any idols, but we must worship and serve the Lord alone. You see, dear friends, you and I here in America may not fashion or make statues that are tangible and bow down before them. But are you worshiping yourself? Are you worshiping money? Are you worshiping your dreams and your desires? Or do you love the Lord your God perfectly? You see, dear friends, every one of us has failed to love the Lord our God perfectly. We have committed idolatry. We have failed to worship God and we have worshiped and served creature more than the Creator. You see, dear friends, we are idolaters and therefore you must repent of your idolatry and come to the living and the true God, the God of the Bible, and trust in Him alone for your salvation. If you don't, you will perish. For true worship can only be offered to the Lord. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. He is the one who made us. He is the creator. He is the maker and the sustainer of all things. But not only is the Lord the maker, He is also the savior of His people. The Lord sent in the fullness of the time His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem us from the curse of the law, that we might be received into His family by adoption. We need the Lord Jesus Christ in order to know God. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. In John 17, the Lord Jesus says, This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. To know God is to have eternal life. And the only way to know God savingly is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, dear friends, who is this God that Psalm 100 speaks of? Well, dear friends, the Bible tells us that there is only one God and He eternally exists in three persons. There are three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one God, the same in substance, equal in power and glory. The triune God, the Holy Trinity, is the only living and true God. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The Lord Jesus says in Matthew 28 and verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So we see there that there is only one name, the name, but that one name belongs to the Father and the Son and the Spirit. One God in three persons. The three persons are equal in power and glory, and those three persons are one God, one in essence. That's the God of the Bible, and that's the only God who can save, because the triune God is the only one who exists from all eternity. If a religion or a so-called church denies the Trinity, that church, so-called, or that religion has abandoned the true gospel. And there is no hope for those who deny the Trinity because the triune God is the only living and true God. 
And dear friends, Jesus Christ is the second person of the Trinity. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, as the Bible says in John 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When the Bible speaks of the Lord Jesus as the only begotten Son, it's speaking about Christ being the eternal Son of God. The word begotten means that Christ eternally exists as the second person of the Trinity. He is begotten, not made. He is begotten, not made. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The Lord Jesus Christ made the heavens and the earth. He, with the Father and the Spirit, is the Creator, the Maker of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ is God, the second person of the Trinity. And therefore, in order for us to worship God, we must worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We must worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. One God in three persons. But then we see in verse 4 the manner of worship. The manner of worship. You see, not only are we commanded to worship God, but we are commanded to worship God according to His Word. See, dear friends, worship is regulated by the Word of God. We don't get to worship God our own way, but God tells us how He wants to be worshipped. Worship is regulated by the Word of God. And so we are told in verse 4, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. We must enter into His courts. We must go to church. We must gather on the first day of the week to worship the living God. And that is because the first day of the week is the Lord's Day, the Christian Sabbath. This is the day that Jesus rose again from the dead. And we are commanded as God's people to gather. We are commanded to come into His presence. And if you are not part of God's people, you need to repent and be part of a local church. You need to repent of your sins, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, put your faith entirely upon Him, and then make sure that you join a local church, a Bible-believing church, where the Word of God is faithfully preached, where the worship of God takes place according to His Word. We come from one such local congregation, Holy Trinity Presbyterian Church. We are a local Bible-believing church. We gather every Lord's Day, the first day of the week, to worship God. And we would warmly invite you to come. We would warmly invite you to learn more about the Christian gospel. We want you to be converted to Christ. We want you to repent of your sins and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ so that you may be received as, as members of the visible church. We want you to be united to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith because that is the only way for us sinners to be brought into communion with God. You must trust in Jesus. Jesus declares in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Him. So you need to individually repent of your sins and believe upon Christ alone for your salvation. And then we would encourage you to come to church, to enter into the courts of the Lord, that you may grow in the Christian uh, faith, that you may learn more about the Bible and grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then finally, verse 5 gives us the motivation for worship, the motivation for praise. Verse 5 says, For the Lord is good, 
His mercy is everlasting and His truth endureth to all generations. The Lord is a good God. He's the only God and He is rich in mercy. His truth endures forever. He's the God of truth. Let God be true, but every man a liar. God is the God of truth, and therefore He alone can save us. He alone can give us what we need, eternal life. He alone can satisfy our souls. Our hearts will remain restless until they find rest in the living God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, this holy and merciful God, uh, this holy and righteous God is also merciful. And He provided a way for sinners to be forgiven. He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins on the cross. He took our punishment upon Himself. When Jesus died on the cross, He died not for His own sins, for He had none, but He died in the room and in the place of sinners as a substitute for our sins. The Apostle Paul says, in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 1st Corinthians 15 sir you need to repent and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ this book is the very Word of God 1st Corinthians 15 the Bible says in verse 3 for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross and satisfied divine justice. We broke the law of God, and Christ paid the penalty for our sins. And He was buried, and on the third day He rose again from the dead. And the only way for you and I to be forgiven, the only way for you and I to be saved from our sin and misery is to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Dear friends, repent today. Do not postpone your repentance, but turn from your wicked ways and come to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God will abundantly pardon all those who put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the good news of the gospel that we bring to you. Our salvation is not by our works. We're not saved by our good works, but we are saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, by His grace. It is by grace that we are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so, dear friends, would you please today come to the Savior, come to the bread of life, to eat and drink by faith. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. He calls you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. May God bless His word.